This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. We're in the exercise files for this chapter. Let's see about doing some basic correction to an image in the RAW plugin. Nothing fancy yet, just something basic. Let's open up this one right here, 3996. You're looking at a shot of Chicago's Union Station. It's called the Grand Hall. It's really kind of neat. It's where I usually pick up my Amtrak trains when I'm making my trips around the country. And so I like the photo. You got a lot of sunlight streaming in through that window, but I've got my color temperature wrong up front. So let's start there. Now you should see right here a little button for basic, basic options. If you don't, that means you've got something else clicked up here, like maybe this, graduated filter. Come over and click the hand tool or the zoom tool and you'll get back to the basics. That's an easy way to get there. Okay, in basic, we have color temperature. Now, we're just trying to get this done as easy as possible. And we're going to try to do it by simply going up here, because I do know that's daylight coming through those windows, and changing it to daylight. And actually, that works pretty good. Very soft, warm kind of color. So I'm happy there. So we don't have to do anything more up here. Down here are the other basic options like exposure. Exposure allows me to change the exposure of the image as if I'm changing the shutter speed. Now the cool thing about exposure is that it's different than something like contrast or brightness. It's nonlinear. It tries to really change exposure and when you're working with a 16-bit image you've got a better chance of getting it. So a couple of ways we can do this on any of these options. I can click here and type in a number or while I'm there I can use my up and down arrow keys to do an in increments of five. If I hold my shift key down, I'm going a lot faster. So that's actually not that bad. Up and down arrow keys. If I click the button right here, the slider I should say, I could change it that way. Or I can come over to the word exposure, which is the way I usually do it, and then click and drag. You know, lots of different ways you can do it. But look at the histogram up here when I'm doing this. See, it's like waves. What I'm trying to do here is not go too far this way or too far this way. We will get much more into the histogram when we get into Photoshop. But you're watching that because if it goes all the way up here, you're blowing things out on the whites. And if it goes all the way up over here, you're blowing it out on the shadows. As a matter of fact, while we're here, these two buttons right here, if I click that button, it's going to show me any areas that are blown out by giving me a color for them. I don't really see anything unless I'm missing it. If I click this one though, we're getting that area over there. It's saying those areas are blown out at the current exposure. We could try leaving that on, moving this button, slider again. Sorry, I keep calling that a button. And we could move that back and forth, but in doing so, we're making other areas get a whole lot darker. Now we're going to talk about how we can manipulate an image in terms of different areas later. We're just talking basics right now. But you can leave that on if you want to. It'll help you out. Let's go ahead and turn it off for now. We don't need it. Contrast. What's well, the contrast of the image? And we can go down to a softer contrast or a harsher one. Let's go ahead and leave that about where it was. Highlights and shadows. Now this one actually might help us a little bit over here. It's saying let me help you in just the areas that go from midpoint to highlights or midpoint to shadow, and I'll try not to mess up anything else. So if we go here and move it, as you can see, it's helping a little bit. It is helping a little bit, so I'm going to take that all the way down this way. Now for exposure, I'm going to lighten that up just a little bit more. And we could try shadows if you want to do that one too. Now if you go too far with any of these, you might wind up flattening out the colors in the image. So you got to watch it. But I do notice this too. Every time I move one slider, sometimes I have to go back and readjust another one. Now I usually start at the top and work my way down, but I will also usually wind up going back and forth and back and forth. You've got areas here to control your whites. And again, that might help us a little bit more in that area. And blacks. Now these three down here are kind of fun. Clarity is the clarity of the image. Not sharpness, but it's clarity. And let me show it to you. If we take it all the way to the left, sometimes this is the coolest way to see what these things do. 
is slam them from the left to the right. It softens the image up. Sometimes I really do like that effect. If we go the other way, it gets much sharper. And you know what? For this image, I kind of like that. Not quite that much, but I do like that. So we're going to take it to right about maybe there. Vibrance is not saturation. So let's go to saturation first because I think we understand that one. Saturation, it's a grayscale image. So you start doing something like this to an image, put a little bit more stuff in it, make it look like it's an aged 100-year-old image, which we'll actually do later to an image. But if we go the other way, we oversaturate. We make the colors pure colors. What I think I'll do here is give it just a little bit less than normal. And now vibrance. Vibrance is, well, the vibrance of the color. It doesn't reduce its saturation. If I go all the way down, there's still color in this image. They're just not as bold, as vibrant. As I go this way, they get more vibrance. I'm going to soften that one up just a little bit, say, to about here. And remember, this is your image. You're doing to this image what you want to do to this image, not what I want to do to the image. Let's do this. Let's come over here to this button. Remember that one? That's snapshots. And let's go ahead and take a snapshot of this image. We'll call it Mod 1. I usually start out with an original. We didn't this time, but I usually kind of put a first one in here, call it Basic, and that's one I can always come back to. Okay, so if we come back over here and we say, I want the original image back, what you can do is click Default. Okay, that's the way it looked originally. If you click Auto, you're saying, you do it for me. And if I click that button, you will notice there's the original image. And the default takes us back to this right here. So if we come back over here into our snapshots, up here, I should say, and we go ahead and create a new one, we'll call this one the basic. You now have the one that you came in with, and you have this one right here. This way you have the ability to kind of look at it and decide, well, okay, this is the way it looked originally, and now this is what I have done to it. But remember something. This is non-destructive editing. So even if you don't do snapshots and come back tomorrow, you still have the ability to pick up the original image and start all over again. So those are some of the basic options in Camera Raw. On to the next.